Osterville Village Library. And for today's First Chapter Fridays, I would like to share this book with you. It's called Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes by Eleanor Kerr. And this book is a novelization about a real person, a little girl named Sadako, who was two years old when the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima during World War II. And when she became ill because of the effects of the radiation, Sadako ends up being a symbol for peace uh, because she attempts to fold a thousand paper cranes along with the legend that if you fold a thousand paper cranes, you'll be granted one wish. So I'm gonna read a little bit from the fly leaf and then the first chapter. Hiroshima born Sadako is lively and athletic and the star of her school's running team. And then the dizzy spells start. Soon gravely ill with leukemia, an after effect of the atom bomb that fell on her city when she was only an infant, Sadako approaches her illness as she did her running with irrepressible spirit. Recalling a Japanese legend, Sadako sets to work folding paper cranes. For the legend holds that if a sick person folds 1,000 cranes, the gods will grant her wish and make her healthy again. Chapter one, good luck signs. Sadako was born to be a runner. Her mother always said that Sadako had learned to run before she could walk. One morning in August of 1954, Sadako ran outside into the street as soon as she was dressed. The morning sun of Japan touched brown highlights in her dark hair. There was not a speck of cloud in the blue sky. It was a good sign. Sadako was always on the lookout for good signs. Back in the house, her sister and two brothers were still sleeping in their bed quilts. She poked her brave big brother, Masahiro. Get up, lazy bones, it's peace day. Masahiro groaned and yawned. He wanted to sleep as long as possible. But like most 14-year-old boys, he also loved to eat. When he sniffed the good smell of bean soup, Masahiro got up, and soon Mitsu and Aiji were awake too. Sadako helped Aiji get dressed. He was six, but he sometimes lost a sock or a shirt. Afterwards, Sadako folded up the bed quilts. Her sister, Mitsu, who was nine, helped to put them away in the closet. Rushing like a whirlwind into the kitchen, Sadako cried, Oh, mother, I can hardly wait to get to the carnival. Can we please hurry with breakfast? Her mother was busily slicing pickled radishes to serve with the rice and soup. She looked sternly at Sadako. You are 11 years old and you should know better, she scolded. You must not call it a carnival. Every year on August 6th, we remember those who died when the atom bomb was dropped on our city. It is a Memorial Day. Mr. Sasaki came in from the back porch. That's right, Sadako-chan, you must show respect. Your own grandmother was killed on that awful day. But I do respect Oba-chan, Sadako said. I pray for her spirit every morning. It's just that I'm so happy today. As a matter of fact, it's time for our prayers now, her father said. The Sasaki family gathered around the little altar shelf. Obashan's picture was there in a gold frame. Sadako looked at the ceiling and wondered if her grandmother's spirit was floating somewhere above the altar. Sadako-chan, Mr. Sasaki said sharply. Sadako quickly bowed her head. She fidgeted and wriggled her bare toes while Mr. Sasaki spoke. He prayed that the spirits of their ancestors were happy and peaceful. He gave thanks for his barbershop. He gave thanks for his fine children. And he prayed that his family would be protected from the atom bomb disease called leukemia. Many still died from the disease, even though the atom bomb had been dropped on Hiroshima nine years before. 
It had filled the air with radiation, a kind of a poison that stayed in people for a long time. At breakfast, Sadako noisily gulped down her soup and rice. Masahiro began to talk about girls who ate like hungry dragons. But Sadako didn't hear his teasing. Her thoughts were dancing around the peace day of last year. She loved the crowds of people, the music, the fireworks, and she could still taste the spun cotton candy. She finished breakfast before anyone else. When she jumped up, she almost knocked the table over. She was tall for her age, and her long legs always seemed to get in the way. Come on, Mitsuchan, she said. Let's wash those dishes so we can go soon. When the kitchen was clean and tidy, Sadako tied red bows on her braids and stood impatiently by the door. Sadako-chan, her mother said softly, we aren't leaving till 7.30. You can sit quietly until it's time to go. Sadako plopped down with a thud onto the tatami mat. Nothing ever made her parents hurry. While she sat, there a fuzzy spider paced across the room. Now a spider was a good luck sign. Sadako was sure the day would be wonderful. She cupped the insect in her hands and carefully set it free outside. That's silly, Masahiro said. Spiders don't really bring good luck. Just wait and see. Sadako said gaily. Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes is part of our year-long display in the children's room highlighting diversity called Reading is a Window to Your World and we hope that you will come in and check it out.